MB7 Mixer version 3 is a multi-band, multi-effects mixing console. It splits the incoming signal into up to seven individual frequency bands and allows you to process each with either internal effects plugins or third-party audio unit or VST plugins. We can adjust the size of the interface from here and we can customize each of the three preset sizes by zooming from anywhere between 70% all the way up to 200%. We set the number of bands here, anywhere from a simple two-way split all the way up to seven individual frequency bands. Use this field to control the vertical scaling and resolution of the faders and the graph. And this knob controls the slope of the crossover between each of the bands. We can adjust the crossover point between the bands either graphically by dragging the dividers or with these knobs. We can bypass the plugins on each band with these bypass buttons. Or we can mute individual bands or solo them. We can adjust the level of each band, pan them individually, and adjust the stereo spread. Here I've got the lowest band panned all the way to mono. We can hide or show the graph from the display with this button here. And we can hide or show the controls here for a simple interface which is frequency and slope controls and the number of bands. We can hide or show the pre-fader plugins. There are two slots here with this button. And the post-fader slots over down here with this button. We can hide or show the assignable controls for automation over here. There are none currently mapped. And we can set the preference for the editor to always stay on top over there. We can audition for mono compatibility, the sum of all these with this button over here. There's a spectrogram display that we can enable or disable here. And we can view either left or right sides individually or both together and we can have different styles of display. Additionally we can hide or show individual elements from the graph with these filter buttons over here. Create a quick group between bands within the same plugin with this link icon. Enable the R in order for them to move in opposite directions. Or we can create a local group using the menu down here for grouping. And we can create up to eight groups locally. MB7 Mixer comes in dual channel mode as well, where left and right channels can be controlled separately for each band. Controls can still be linked and reversed, and they'll operate on the two sides independently. As well, dual channel mode can operate in mid-side mode by clicking this button here, where we're now working with mid and side rather than left and right. and they can be panned, either linked in reverse or unlinked. And in context. Controls can be linked across multiple instances of MB7 Mixer on different tracks using global groups. Here I'm going to set the low frequency of my drum kit, mainly the kick drum, to global group 1. And I have a simple two frequency band split on my bass. And I'm going to set the lower frequency band to the same group. And I'm going to reverse them so that as I raise one, the other will be lowered.
And in dual mode, the two sides can be linked with the link button on top so that they move together. Let's use some plugins to give some color and depth to this piano part. I'm going to start by splitting it into three bands. And I'm going to add some chorus to the middle band. So I'm going to click in the plugin slot and go to modulation chorus. And it's a little deep, but let's tune it to where we want it. I'm going to sync it to tempo, quarter notes. And spread it out. And then on the next upper band, I want to add a multi-tap delay. So I'm going to close this one. It's in the way. I can use the close box or I can click here to simply close the interface. So from here, I'm going to go to multi-tap delay. Sync this to tempo as well. And I'm going to cross over the bands wider. Now I'm going to add some tremolo to the middle band to get some panning. Let's solo it to hear it in isolation. I'll sync it to tempo. Let's spread that a bit wider. We had a nice stereo we mentioned. Maybe I want to have some panning on the top as well. I can copy and paste plugins. I'm going to go copy and paste this one into here and maybe use a different rhythm. Now the low end, maybe I want to use a third party plugin. I'm going to use some saturation. I'm going to go load audio unit plugin and there's one that I like that's called saturation from SoftTube and I use it often. So I'm going to dial it up. And let's say I like this configuration and I want to reuse it another time. I can easily make it available in my plugin menu by clicking there and going Save As. I'll call it Low End Saturation and saving it into my Documents folder in MB7 Mixer, Plugins and User. And now next time I go to my plugin slot, let's go to a post plugin here. Under Select, there it is. So I can call it up with the actual settings that I saved it at. Here's a mono guitar part. I've isolated the middle band and used the structor just to add some drive. And then I've set the top band with a wide crossover as well with some custom delay. MB7 Mixer can listen to another track at its sidechain input and have that signal arrive at the input of all the effects plugins on the different frequency bands. I'm going to have it listen to this drum track and I've got a gate plugin called up and as I turn this on, this will be chopped up based on that drum rhythm. I have it split into two bands here, one processed with a chorus and another with a sweep filter, each pan. Here I've got the frequency split between these two bands automated. All the internal parameters within MB7 Mixer appear as already mapped automation parameters. But what if I want to automate a parameter in a third-party plugin? Like for example, maybe this shift or feedback control. First thing I'm going to do is enable this button here to show the control settings. And then this button here to show all the assignable controls. And they're going to appear here, but they're none mapped right now. Now I'm going to click here. And I'm going to go under parameter mapping and I'm going to select shift. So now I've got a map control that will control the shift parameter. I'm going to click again and then I'm going to click feedback. Now this will control the feedback parameter. I'm going to put my DAW into latch mode and now I can start my sequencer and automate.
and let's listen back. And you can see all the automation has been recorded. Now, if I want to undo these assignments, I can simply click under here, go to parameter mapping, and then reset all assignments. Here I've got a seven band instance of MB7 mixer across the master bus, and I'm using it for some mastering. Now I've got each band linked so I can offset the left and right sides together. I've got some subtle offsets here in the low end, a little bit of a boost here, subtle boost there, and a little bit of a dip there. But the really special thing about doing this is that I can use an individual compressor on each band with different attack times and different characteristics set to the way I like. On this band, I'm using a Slate Virtual Mix Rack with this compressor with a fairly slow attack. I'm using, in this case, the Virtual Mix Rack again with a different compressor with a quicker attack. And then here, I've got, on that band that I'm soloing, the T-Rax White 2A, which has got a much slower attack characteristic. And I can tailor each band to the kind of compression that I want. And here I'm using the built-in Blue Cat compressor, which sounds great. And then finally another T-Rax compressor over here with warm characteristic for the upper band. And an upper band compression using an opto compressor. And all together it sounds great. As you use MB7 Mixer, you will find it to be an invaluable tool for both creative and practical purposes that will enrich your productions. Mm -hmm.